Hello there, my name is Dr. Anton Jessup, curator of Monster Studies here at the university. We're nearing the end of our semester, and so, ladies, gentlemen, members of the press, I have something of a, a final preparation here in store for you in the form of this wondrous egg. Leathery, scaled, all but cooking with its own fierce internal heat. Yes, it is high time we crack open the science of the fireworm. The dragon is a creature that varies greatly from one unnatural corner of the world to the other. While Asian dragons crackle with divine power, Western worms run the gamut from apocalyptic world serpents to infernal threats that rain down fire from above and lord over golden middens in their buried lairs. Yes, they tend to be a greedy, foul-tempered lot, with little love for anything that fails to shimmer, or of course sizzle, when exposed to the flickering flame of their incendiary breath. Certainly, the occasional child or silver-haired maiden may tame their wild nature, but their relationship is typified by violence, horror, and destruction. Here in the natural world, man alone commands the power of fire. Mastery of the flame allows us to break free from the constraints of our body's energy budget and expand into otherwise hostile climates thanks to the warming glow of campfire. It allowed us to conquer the night and in time conquer the world. When humans harnessed the power of fire, they began a long and destructive relationship with the flame. And while so many unnatural creatures writhe and rut within the flame's embrace, natural species adapt not to fire itself, but to particular regimes of fire, meaning that any deviation in frequency or intensity can have disastrous effects on sustainability. And that brings us back to the fire-breathing dragon. Yes, sweetie, yes. Yes, you're hatching, you're hatching. The underlying biology of a fire-breathing reptile is a fairly simple exercise. Remember, three ingredients are necessary. Oxygen is a given. The spark we can reasonably attribute to mineral coatings on the teeth or ingested rocks and stones in the creature's gizzard. All that remains is a high-pressure blast of fuel. The bombardier beetle provides our best natural world model for explosive spewing. The creature produces hydrogen peroxide, as well as substances called hydroquinones that are stored in a separate reservoir. When bombardier beetles sense danger, they release the H2O2 and hydroquinones into a special reaction chamber. Here, secreted enzymes break down the H2O2, releasing free oxygen to oxygenate the hydroquinone. This chemical reaction generates enough heat to bring the entire mixture to a boiling point. With an explosive discharge of fluids, the bombardier beetle sprays its attacker. Paleontologist Henry Gee has suggested the colorless, flammable organic compound diethyl ether as a potential dragon fuel, especially as yeasts and other organisms produce the prerequisite ethanol as a waste product and certain bacteria excrete the sulfuric acid necessary to dry the ether into needed fuel. But an evolved fire breather would also serve as an important environmental factor in whatever unnatural ecosystem it called home. Whether it utilized the flame defensively, during mating competition, predation, or even a crude form of cooking, dragonfire would play a role in the spread of wildfires, at least in providing the necessary spark. The organisms in its midst would have adapted to cope and even depend on these periodic blazes. So think of that the next time you behold the oh-so-noble dragon slayer. Not only is he the true fire spreader, destabilizing the natural cycle of wildfires, he also seeks to eradicate the majestic fireworms that provide a necessary fiery jolt to living systems in their midst. So there you have it. Support the role of fire drakes in your community. Give them whatever gold or maidens they require, and it absolutely wouldn't be a bad idea to get on their good side. In transmission and class dismissed.